100, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. At exactly 9.42 a.m. local time, we land in Peking, the capital city of the most highly populated country in the world. As the winds were very favorable, we arrived 10 minutes earlier than expected. Flights in this direction generally benefit from a favorable wind direction, whereas westerly flights do not. The flight to Peking took about nine and a half hours of flying time, whereas the one back to Frankfurt is scheduled to take 10 hours, 25 minutes. We are taxiing now with our DC-10 for another few hundred meters to the parking position. In Frankfurt, it is now 2.45 a.m. For the crew members, there is no point in changing the onboard time, because the aircraft will be going straight back to Frankfurt. We will accompany them back to tomorrow. Good morning, Captain. Good morning. 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 Good
About 40 minutes after takeoff, we are over the Gobi Desert, where there are very interesting cloud formations. On this flight, Mr. Beretz is the flying pilot. Mr. Beretz, could you perhaps just briefly explain to us the DC-10's instruments? Yes, of course. Here in front of me are the flight guidance and navigation instruments. There we have the autopilot, power unit monitoring instruments. Those are secondary instruments in case one of the main ones fail. Then here we have the throttles for the three engines. And here the communications instruments, such as radios with frequency settings, etc. Could you explain some of the flight engineer's instrument panel to us, please? Certainly. We begin here with the hydraulic system, and as one can see, we have everything available in triplicate. That's due to the fact that our aeroplane has three engines. On each engine, there are hydraulic pumps. Therefore, we have three systems. The electrical system is here. Three engines means three generators, and the corresponding warning lights and service switches. Over there, we have the instrumentation and control for our auxiliary power unit, the APU, which we can use on the ground to provide our own electrical power. Then we continue with the fuel system. There are three main tanks, one tank for each engine, plus one additional or auxiliary tank. However, this auxiliary tank is the biggest, holding exactly 39 and a half tons of kerosene. Over there is the pneumatic system, which is again also divided into three parts, as there are three engines. Then there are the temperature controls for the cabin, and also for the cargo compartment. Today we have goldfish in the cargo compartment. They weigh 630 kilos in all, and naturally need a certain temperature. Over there are the warning systems for fire and smoke inside the cargo compartment and the fire extinguisher controls for operating special extinguishing cylinders. Then we have the cabin pressure regulation system. We try to keep the pressure in the cabin as high as possible so that the conditions are as pleasant as possible for our passengers. Here we have indicators showing the temperature of the brakes with overheat warning lights. The pilots are very cautious about braking. We don't want passengers to be disturbed, so these warnings are rarely seen. Then, of course, we need water in the aeroplane for making coffee, washing hands, etc. There are three water supply systems with three indicators for water levels situated in the tanks. And that essentially completes the flight engineer's instrument panels. Thank you.